Hello, everybody. Welcome to the J Squared Podcast. Jesse Cast and Jason Williams here with you back for a brand new episode. And Jason, we've got a great guest here this week, the actress Melissa Ponzio. She's all over, uh, and we're very happy to have her here this week. Well, MP is going to tell you all about how I was an acting coach today, <laughs> <laughs> how I got a start. So uh, I'm excited to just compare notes with the, me being the great actor that I am. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've got, we've got all of Melissa's great acting stories and, as Jay alluded to, all of Jay's great acting stories, which uh, there are plenty as well. So <laughs> a lot of great stuff coming up with Melissa. Uh, Jay, it's an exciting conversation. Let's go. All right, we're now joined by our guest here on the J Squared podcast. It is the very talented actress, Melissa Ponzio. Melissa, thanks so much for taking the time and joining us today. Thank hi, you both. hi, thank you so much for being here. Good to see you both. Hi, 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 hi. I know, it's like jazz hands. <laughs> Too much coffee in the morning. And I don't yeah. drink coffee, so. <laughs> well, Melissa, I want to get started uh, just, you know, first off, first off, obviously highlighting you. You've had such a a great career in, in acting, obviously the long run on, on Teen Wolf and Chicago Fire and so many other things. But, um, you know, initially, what sparked your interest in acting and how did you get into it to to get to where you are now? Oh, great question. Um, my mom for a time, you know, was just her and I, single mom, and we had to use our imagination because we couldn't use a lot of money that we didn't have. And so my mom, um, I think, like, uh, kind of inspired me to be a creative child. And uh, she was an actress and a model when she was younger. She went to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts and was a model, you know, before it was something to be a model <laughs> up in New York. And so I think it was always there. I think, um, you know, she emulated something for me at a very young age. And then I saw Sigourney Weaver in Alien <laughs> and it was a done deal. Yeah. Uh, I always like to say, uh, you know, for, for me, it was just like um, the experience of seeing someone that large doing something that spectacular. I wanted to be that as a woman. And I also wanted to be that like, oh, my gosh, you know, 30 feet wide. Yeah. Uh, not <laughs> in reality, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> On the screen. Yeah. On the screen. Yeah. And then, you know, you have dreams and, and then you have expectations of family and, hey, let's go to college and let's, you know, get health insurance and let's do all this. And, you know, it takes a chance on you. And, and, and here we are that many years later. Melissa, you're in everything. You are in everything on television. <laughs> you're like the Samuel L. Jackson of, 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 of women. Uh, I, I, you know, I've been a fan of yours for a long time. Robbie oh. always tells me about you. We share the same agent, and he was telling me about you all the time. So I've been watching you and following you a whole, you know, and um, you just yesterday, I'm turning through the channel. I'm watching these two terrific actors, Octavia Spencer and Melissa McCarthy, getting out of this Lamborghini in this movie called Thunder Force, which was, and then who pops up? Melissa. You, you're playing the mayor running for something. I'm like, oh my God. And you can't go through 10 channels without seeing you on something. This is so awesome. Well, you're very kind. You're very kind to say that. Um, you know, it's been it's been a journey. It's it's interesting to be, you know, um, you know, a character actor and coming up in the South and having so many different opportunities than maybe New York, L.A., Chicago. And uh, that opportunity actually came from the Southeast. And, you know, it was so amazing to work with both of those uh, iconic women and also to be, you know, in our business, much like I'm, I'm sure when you're on the court, you know, you've got your business that you do with the game and then you got the funny business that happens on the sidelines right and so like in between takes with with everyone was so much fun just to see their process and you know melissa is an amazing improviser and just to see just to be in the company of of such greatness was a, a real honor and, and melissa you mentioned being in the south and, and going to college in atlanta and, and obviously we've seen over the years so much has happened with filming in atlanta and that growing uh how much did that lead to more opportunity for you and has how much has that changed over the years from when you were in college to where you are now? Well, it's it's changed a lot. You know, back in the day when people wanted to start in the southeast, there were very few productions. Um, you, you know, we had I'll Fly Away and in the heat of the night and maybe just a couple <laughs> of movies sprinkled in. But yeah. um, up through the ranks, you know, and, and realized what a. Um, what an asset Atlanta is for production by way of just um, infrastructure, airport, uh, the changing of the seasons, uh, the the niceties that we have here. You know, we've got everything but an ocean. And even if you need to get to that, just go over to Savannah. So, <laughs> um, you know, people got to work and they got to work bringing work here. And, uh, you know, and, and now, you know, I don't want to say like, get off my lawn, you young actors, but there's just so <laughs> much more work opportunity here for people. And they think it's just really easy to 
be able to, you know, not for nothing, just, you know, get an audition for Marvel. And it's like, there were people that walked a long time and these dusty, dusty roads <laughs> <laughs> to get to let's all enjoy them. Let's all enjoy them and be thankful. You know, I watch you on Teen Wolf for years, right? And uh, so when I'm watching this show, it's like the spookiest sets ever. Like if I'm in my house by myself, <laughs> you guys are filming. I don't know if it's on location or it's on set, but the houses are spooky. The way you work, the hospital is spooky. You know, I'm just like, <laughs> if you're home by myself, I got to change the channel to like Yellowstone or something, <laughs> you know? Which it also has a different kind of spookiness that Yellowstone, yeah. I'll have you know. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's funny but you mentioned Yellowstone because one of our contemporaries on that, um, on Teen Wolf, uh, Ian Bowen, also plays on Yellowstone as well. So, right. you know, never too far away. Um, thank you for saying that, you know. Um, and, and working on that set with all these young people, not that you're not young and beautiful, because you are beautiful and young, but, you know, it must be like a locker room. Very kind. You know, when, when, when people come in, you know, when we have rookies come in, you, you know, you're, the, you're playing a mother on the show. And then you got a bunch of 16 and 18 year olds running around. I could just only imagine what that's all about in between takes, you know? It's fun. I have to tell you that being around um, youth is, you know, keeps you youthful, to be quite honest. And, uh, you know, and, and a lot of the, the, I refer to them as kids, but a lot of the younger talent that's on Teen Wolf, you know, I think that Jeff Davis and the creative team were always looking for fresh faces. And so you have people that this was maybe their first or second job. And so, you know, and everybody knows what it's like to be, you know, your first day at school, right? Well, first day on set's the same way. It's like, where's craft service? And where, how do I get to these places? And so you see these, you know, people that are just kind of like, how do I um, find my way? And and I and I like to say that we're a very, very kind cast that would always welcome everybody. And, you know, even actors that have, I have seen on other projects that were like, you know, when I when I first started on Teen Wolf, you know, Tyler was so great to me and he showed me the ropes and I was super nervous and, you know, all that went away after the first take. And, you know, I think that as a cast, we're really proud of that. It sure that happens on, on many sets, but I have been to sets where it doesn't happen and I'd rather the positive <laughs> than negative. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, Melissa, I'm curious for, for Teen Wolf, uh, you know, obviously you look back in the day, there's the, the Teen Wolf movies and out of the show takes on a, it's a whole, whole different thing but when you first read for the show or you know found out about the show just what were your initial thoughts when you were going into that process of what this show is going to be and it ultimately turns into six seasons and filming a movie um you know from the beginning of it to to where it ended up what was your process with that well my process when I first got it was what is happening <laughs> <laughs> why are we doing this because you know uh a lot of times when people try to, you know, um, you know, reincorporate, reinvigorate, you know, uh, something that as iconic as Teen Wolf. I mean, everybody kind of knows Teen Wolf, Michael J. Fox. Yeah. You know, um, you, you better bring it. And and they brought it, you know, when when we were first starting, you know, I like to say that it was kind of like a Romeo and Juliet with a little bit of Teen Wolf in it. There was a story and there was a mythology and there was there was real interesting, diverse characters and all progressed over the first season. And, you know, we just thought we were making Teen Wolf, you know, I mean, we were we were kids. We were just uh, allowed to do whatever we wanted in Atlanta. And, and MTV was like, yeah, 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 we'll put it up. And then when <laughs> we put it up and it was a juggernaut, I mean, by the second season, I've never had an experience where you're just walking down the street and someone will, would stop their car to say hi. I mean, <laughs> it was, it was an amazing turnabout within just a couple of seasons and, and, you know, and it, Team Wolf had a certain amount of success. And then when you think about successful shows like uh, Friends, you know, I mean, then you really start to think as an actor and as a performer, how much your life has changed because of, uh, you know, somebody's creative vision somebody's many, many, many green lights to get to there. And then many, many women that were, came before you that maybe, you know, um, were, were in, in in or, you know, you know, how did it get down to me? I don't know, but I'm grateful and thankful every day. <laughs> and Jay, you obviously know what it's like to to be recognized and be famous for, for your career as well. When did you notice things? Yeah. Start, when did you notice <laughs> things started to change where people would stop you on the street? Obviously in New York, you were a guy who was recognizable no matter what but but when did you first start to notice that 
when I started missing shots, <laughs> <laughs> when the ball wasn't going in the hoop, Melissa, that's when yeah. I knew I was famous. I'd be walking down the street and like 80 old lady be stopping or getting off the bus screaming at me. You should have made that shot. You could have, you should have dunked it. You know, that's when I knew I made it. Uh, <laughs> when I started getting a lot of criticism, but Melissa, can you remember an audition that you had was just awful. I watched the St. John's University game last night and I watched this poor kid who could, he missed like nine straight free throws and then he shot an air ball from the free throw line. Wow. And I can remember doing that one time. <laughs> so I was just said, you know, tomorrow I'm gonna ask Melissa, can you remember one time you went to an audition or maybe more than one time that you just said, oh my goodness, that was horrible. <laughs> yes, um, yes. Thank you for bringing up this <laughs> wonderful memory. Um, I was auditioning for a show and the show's name will come to me, uh, but it was basically about these um, grifters and specifically these kind of, um, you know, uh, the, what, what the colloquial term is, and I, and I hope that I'm using this right, black Irish. So people that look like me, right? Not the right. typical Irish, of, you know, redheaded, whatever. And so, uh, you know, grifters, um, and I was like, well, I'm going to learn how to do an Irish accent. <laughs> and so the night before, you know, I'm listening to my little CD. I'm a Walkman. And I'm like, I'm going to get this Irish accent down. And, you know, you try it out a couple of times. And I think I had to drive and stay at a hotel for the audition. And so I tried out, you know, I, I came in with the accent to try to uh, check in. And the lady was like, oh, <laughs> are you from France? <laughs> and so I knew my accent wasn't <laughs> right at all. But, you know, what I what I lack in skill, I make up for in commitment. And I was like, I'm going to just commit to this horrible accent. And so it was for a very large casting director in the Southeast. And so I go in there and I'm, you know, the director's there and I do my best thing. And she's like, OK, um, you do realize that they have been in the States for 150 years. And I was trying to do my like <laughs> thickest Irish broke. And I just I just it was just humiliating from the start. I should have just given it up. But, you know, as an actor, you try to set yourself apart. You you try to do your job well. You know, you try to improve with every audition. But that was that was uh, one of the worst auditions I've ever had. And I'm so happy, Jason, that you brought it up. I that. <laughs> but did but you I mean, get the role? Right? You could have no, got the role. I didn't get the role. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I got a lot of strange stares and looks. But other than that, um, and a great story. I mean, everybody has a story. Everybody has a story of a really bad day. And Melissa, where are you? At Butterfly World back there? Are those butterflies on the wall? Hawks? <laughs> Yeah, it's crazy, right? So um, this is my, this this is a spare room, but it's really just a girly room all over the walls. And, um, and I collect them. And I also go to a lot of estate sales and I, and I collect a lot of purses, vintage clothing, vintage jewelry, that kind of stuff. But yeah, th these are my paper kites. Oh, very cool. You, yeah, you and your significant other have a business, don't you? That is yes, like we do. Good. Yes. 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 Yeah, so um, Kenny Alfonso, my partner, um, he's also an actor here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. um, we have a, um, a business called The Goods. It started out as a kind of like a two-man vaudevillian sketch troupe, and you would do sketches and sc commercial spoofs and, you know, music video parodies, and it kind of evolved into a clothing line, and so now we have The Goods brand clothing that we sell um, online. Awesome. And it's kind of inspirational, kind of like a no fear, you know, if you've got The Goods, wear The Goods. Nice. I'm awesome. a triple X. <laughs> you got it. Thank you. Packages will be coming. <laughs> yes, thank you. And Melissa, you, know, you, you mentioned starting in a, doing a little sketch group like that. We know so many actors start doing it that way where they'll jump jump in, whether it's, you know, Second City or or what a, wherever they may be in the country doing a, a sketch group or an improv group. Um, you know, how much did that inspire you early on in, you know, in terms of doing comedy versus drama, do you have a preference? And does one lead into the other better in terms of going sketches to comedy or sketches to dramatic acting and what you've seen so far? Um, great question. Really great question. And I'm glad to hear that uh, the people that you've interviewed or people that you know start with, um, you know, specifically improv or sketch. Uh, I think that they're valuable tools. And, you know, starting out with any with any performer, um, specifically someone that's going into the acting realm, I always encourage to take an improv class because it allows you, you know, I mean, it's very basic, yes and. And so when you are in a commercial, you know, when you're in a commercial casting or if you're in front of a really big casting director and um, 
and you know, and they, and they give you immediate direction. Well, you need to be able to do it. And that's what I think improv is, is that somebody is giving you something and you have to be able to say, yes, we're in a spaceship and those spaceships have two palm trees that are coming out of it. You know, I mean, whatever, yeah. whatever it is, and you have to be very accepting of it and you have to be able to turn on a dime and it gets rid of some of those nerves. I believe that improv does because then it gives you um, a sense of no matter what I've prepared if they tell me X, Y, Z, then I'm able to do it and not get so freaked out about it. Cause I think in a lot of actors, we over prepare because we want to be perfect. We want to make that shot every single time and you can't, sometimes you have to adjust, right? You know, sometimes some somebody's in your way or it doesn't go to plan. Um, and also sketches, sketches that have a beginning, middle and end golden you know a lot of sketches uh -huh. sometimes um, I mean, I'm, I'm being, I'm being a little judgmental here, but writing a sketch with the, with the, beginning, middle, and end is, is really important. You know, a lot of times you can do something funny and then just like, da, 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 but that, that doesn't really, <laughs> that doesn't, that doesn't, sh you know, show you the full range of, of the comedy. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, I just like to get paid just like everybody else. So, you know, comedy, drama, you need me to stand in front of a Hewlett Packard printer? Sure. Yeah. As long as the check cash is right. That's, yes, that's, that's what matters. Melissa, you were talking about Michael J. Fox earlier, and I had a chance to have Mike at my house. He has Woo! Parkinson's. Um, I helped him raise a lot of money. I gave him the proceeds from Loose Balls, a book I wrote, to end up being a New York Times bestseller. Um, and so we had a good relationship. He actually helped my mother get on a list uh, for Parkinson for these experimental drugs that pretty much worked on my mom, but didn't work on Michael, unfortunately. Um, so we had, he gave, we started working together, doing different projects and he had a show you remember called Spin City. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I was on Spin City with me, uh, Freddie Munez and, uh, Jeff Gordon, the race car racer. So much fun. <laughs> you know, so you we have were on so much fun. Tell me about that. Tell yeah, me so about we that. Were adding, you know, we went on and we, you know, Jeff obviously overprepared like you were talking about. He's a race car driver. He's playing himself. I'm playing myself. Freddie Muniz is just laying in the bed. We're visiting him at a hospital. And I'm supposed to say, you know, I'm Jason Williams. And when I grab my 25th rebound, I'm going to donate it to you tonight and say, go, Freddie. And then Jeff Gordon's supposed to say, when I go across and get the 500 laps, and I win the day total 500. But he kept messing up his line. And we end up being there for three <laughs> hours. And I'm like, he's playing himself, you know? Right. So I was just like, so I said, look, Jeff, you know, I know you're a race car driver. I'm a basketball player. Now we got to give credit to these actresses and actors, how hard this is. I said, let me just have your line. So I was like, I'm Jason Williams. I'm going to grab 25 re rebounds tonight. And this is Jeff Gordon. And he's going to win the Daytona 500. And Freddie Munez was like, and then he messed up his line. He was like, who are you, Dennis Rodman? And I was like, no, we can't go through this again. We ended up doing five hours for one scene. And that's when I was like, you know what? Basketball is probably where I just stick. <laughs> Yeah, Melissa, how many experiences like that have you had on set where we know in general on set it's it's a 12 hour day at the least where you're doing multiple takes. I know you get breaks and get to go off, but how do you fill that time and how do you in a mental state prepare yourself for 12 hour days where you might be saying the same thing 20, 30 times over in a row? Right. Um, it's a muscle memory. You know, you just have to, you know, it, it's just by fire you know starting out uh, it just like anything with 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 practice even with games you know you have to sit there and you have to do so many you know three throws or whatever they're called to, to get that muscle memory uh, in, in your hands and in your eyes and in your body <laughs> um and it's and it's the same with realizing that when you're there even if you have one line much less 20 50 lines whatever it may be there's going to be a certain amount of um repetitiveness and you ha can't let that sit in your body. You have to somehow make it fresh every single time and believable every single time. And then, you know, not, I think a lot of people just like any, you know, it may be starting out and you guys can speak to this. It's like when, when you, when you first get to the first, you're so excited and you want to meet everybody and you want to eat everything and right. you want to like have the, take the experience all the way in. Um, but that exerts a lot of energy, right? And so over time, you learn to shut down in your trailer and have a mini nap and look at the <laughs> sides and know that you, you know, you can't, you can't do your best per 
performance if you only have 10% in the tank, right? You have to hover at a, you know, a 50 to 80 and so you have to replenish. And, and I'm sure it's just like that with, with sports as well, right? Yeah, I played, I'll tell you another funny story. I played with Larry, against Larry Bird yeah. and Michael Jordan. My first two games, I yeah. was going against them. <laughs> and the first time I got into the game, I go to grab a free throw. That's an easy rebound. The ball hits off my head, goes out of bounds. The, the coach takes me out. That's it. I'm in the game for two <laughs> minutes. The next day, I'm playing Larry Bird. He's lighting me up like 40 points. I run down. I just forget all about basketball. I'm just like, I'm just going to fight this guy, and then I'm just going to kick me out the league. And I just <laughs> should have just stayed in school. I should have just been a doctor. I could have been anything, but I'm not going to make it. <laughs> I'm not going to make it in basketball. You ever had experience where you just felt like, oh, man, you know, my career is stalling. Uh, my career, you know, I'm this this actress, um, you know, this hungry actress, you know, where I just feel like, you know, I just should have took a different profession. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think everybody feels that way at one time, right. that they're not going to get another gig. You know, whether you're an accountant, an actor, <laughs> a sports figure, a doctor, you know, I mean, you have bad days and you can have 99 good days. And that one bad day is the one that somehow affects us mentally. How do you, how did you prepare for games mentally, knowing that, you know, you kind of had to... I guess there's a different type of presence when you're when you're actually have so many things that that are around you and live and it's not repeating, you know? I mean, it's just like one big show for an hour and a half, right? Yeah, and you know, one of the things I prepared for Melissa was that I had to find something in the basketball game that I can do that nobody else can do. You know, everybody in the NBA is a good shooter, good, you know, athlete. So I said, "You know what? I'm going to find something that's going to take the pressure off of me." You know, I'm going to become a role player, yeah. something where I can go, you know, I'm just going to, you know, not worrying about having to be a shooter, not having to be a passer. I'm just going to be a guy that just hustles all the time, works hard, rebounds, dives on the floor, you know, because hustle is a talent, but it's something that I can do every day yeah. and I can sleep the night before because, you know, I don't have to worry about the ball going in. I was an offensive rebounder. So when the guy missed who stood up all night worrying about making that shot, I'll just grab it. Throw it back to him. He'll shoot it again. He'll miss it. I'll throw it back to him. And I, <laughs> that's how I relieved all the all the pressure for me. You know, just becoming a very good role player and staying in my swim lane. Melissa, you I know you said you live in the southeast in Atlanta. You said you're not a big sports fan, but there are there any sports that you do follow? Or if not, um, you know, what else alongside with acting do you do you like to do in terms of some of your hobbies? Well, you know, uh, go Braves. Being in Atlanta with we- love the Atlanta Braves. I've been here long enough and also had family here long enough to to be a huge Braves fan. Um, you know, when when we get to the World Series, uh, you know, which which has happened on and off. My grandmother was a huge Braves fan. And um I remember as a little girl, you know, we would we would take Marta, which is our public transportation, down to um the old stadium. And I would be with these two old biddies and they would have their own pillows that they would sit on and they would pull up their polyester pants over their knees and have their little peanuts and drink beer. And we would watch all, you know, we would watch all the players. And so that's always been in my heart. Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, here, here in Atlanta, you know, there's a lot of nature that you can go and see and lots of uh, hiking and stone mountain and wonderful things that, you know, are kind of like iconic landmarks. It's a food town. Y'all ever come to Atlanta? Let's go, let's go out. Cause there's a lot of <laughs> wonderful food food here a lot of great chefs and again you know to my kite collection um <laughs> you know for me i like to collect a lot of strange things and so going to estate sales yard sales thrift stores that's something that you know that i like to do as well um and it has ca- caught on you know it's a way of kind of reusing and recycling and and all those good things i i barely ever buy anything new all my stuff is is you know second hand oh that's awesome yeah and yeah. Very, super important obviously uh you mentioned the Braves they they obviously won the World Series uh a year ago or two seasons ago sure um, were, were you in the city for that or yeah did you did uh like what could you feel the excitement in the city or were you off filming somewhere else no we had a lot of excitement in the city and you know um it's a building thing here in Atlanta. You know, we, we, we're, we're kind of like, Oh, is it going to, Oh, you're going to kind of, like, Oh, um, you know, I also understand that we've got a really impressive, um, uh, soccer team 
know for a while there we had a hockey team and so you know sports are a big thing here in Atlanta but yeah I mean you know Braves number one so Melissa you have you're so busy because uh, you know I like I told you I see you on TV everywhere you're prol prolific TV actress and movie actors um so do you have any projects that you're working that you wish that you can get to right now you know some passion projects no I'm allergic to responsibility <laughs> um, that's why I'm an actor. And so I don't have any passion projects. I like to just uh, audition and then get hired and work. I'm not, I, I am in awe of people that love to write and love to direct and love to do all those. And I really try to, to be the best that I can in that one little lane and show up and do my job. <laughs> and Melissa, I know you've done work uh, on podcasts as well. Uh, you did the the fiction podcast Bridgewater. Um, which was number yeah. one on Apple Fiction Podcasts. Um, how different is that from just acting in general, where obviously you're doing kind of a voice acting type of role um, in a fiction podcast? How did that come about? And yeah, how much different is that than, than being on the screen? It was a totally brand new experience for me. I don't Have you all ever done a podcast? I mean, other than other than this, you know, kind of thing? Like Not, not in like an acting fiction no. narration style, so no. Right. Right. So it was really interesting because we we the first season of Bridgewater we actually did during COVID. So I actually recorded it here in this room alone and we had Zoom. So we were acting in a way, seeing each other through Zoom to, to have something to work yeah. off of. And, you know, who knew that, you know, and, and, you know, everybody else, someone was in a closet and somebody was in their, you know, friend's garage and somebody was in a car with their car doors shut. It's it just like, however we could make it happen during COVID. And so for then, for, for it to be such a success and have a second season, you know, having, having to have, make up your own kind of, uh, you know, maybe in a way that made it better because we had to, you know, it was under very strange circumstances that we were performing. It's, it's been, it's been a, a wild ride to say the least. M Melissa, I wanted to be an actor so bad and I had the opportunity yeah. because I was a basketball player. So they would say, There's hey, still time. You know. Let's do it. <laughs> but you know, to hurry up the wait, the waiting in the trailers, you know, they're getting on there and the lighting didn't work. You have hiccups with the cameras and all this. But I, I learned, um, I did a show uh, for, for Bill Cosby. Uh, he was doing a show and um, it was the spinoff, I forget the name of it, of the Cosby show. It was a big show. Uh, it was on NBC. A different world? No, no, it was uh, not a different world. It, I, I had tried out for a different world, and they wanted me to be on there every week, and I was like, ah, oh, that's too much work, um, believe <laughs> it or not. But Who else it was is a show that he started. Someone else is allergic to responsibility, I see. <laughs> <laughs> well, after working with Bill Cosby, and, you know, he had the teleprompters, and I didn't even know what was on them teleprompters. I just yeah. know I couldn't read them well. But he would go in, and I would study the script all week, and he would go in and just ad-lib everything. He was like with Melissa McCarthy, you know, working yes. with her. And then I'm waiting for my cue to go off. And then he would just go. So I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to go in. You know, he wouldn't let me play myself. He wouldn't let me play a doctor. You know, he, then he would let me play uh, uh, a dentist or anything that I studied for. He would just flip the script on me the next day. <laughs> so I would just be in there going, oh, my goodness. And I just learned to relax and ad lib it. And I started getting a little cocky because then I got a chance to work with James Earl Jones on Broadway. Uh, yeah. And I was just like, you know, I'm going to do this forever. And then I found out that you had to film five shows a week or six shows and then work a double shift. on. And I was like, this is much more than me just coming in, saying my line and leaving. Basketball, <laughs> yes. you come in, you have a good game, a bad game, you're out of there, you know, in two hours. This was an all day thing. So Spike Lee and Denzel Washington was having um. I forgot, what was it, Jesse? What was the name of the movie they were doing with Ray Allen? Oh, He Got Game. He Got Game. Yeah. And I went in, and I'm feeling real good because I just got, you know, uh, I'm becoming a, an actor in my mind. So I'm thinking I don't have to, you know, uh, uh, go out for any auditions. I should just get it because I'm a basketball player, and I've been on this. And look at my resume, all of three things. Right. <laughs> so I go in, and Spike Lee goes, okay, and he gives me a line. And um. I'm the, you know, I am the shoe in for this part that Ray Allen was playing, you know, uh, sure. with Denzel Washington. So I was it, just yeah. like real cocky and I go in and I added an explicitive at the end. And I was like, and F that. And he looked at me and everybody was looking around <laughs> like, no respect for the script. What are you, crazy? You know, we've been doing this for a lifetime. And I was just so embarrassed. I didn't even give him the role. Uh, they gave it to a Ray Allen and he did it. It was a successful movie. But so many times that I started feeling myself 
that I would go in and go get knocked down by some experienced actor. Heck, we had Carl Lumbley on here, you know? And he's yeah. like, you know, so serious, such a good actor. You know, I would go in and say, you know what? You know, I am, my Q rating is high right now, you know? <laughs> so I should get this <laughs> role. Like trying to bank on that. <laughs> yeah, and all, all the roles, Jesse, that I went in, that I had to play myself, I never got. <laughs> 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 it was the role that I played, you know, that I had to play for something else that I got, you know, but um, so much respect for you, Melissa, and your craft and what you're doing um, and what you continue to do so well. It's just uh, people think it's, a, it's easy, uh, but it's not at all. Well, I find it so interesting that you couldn't even get typecast as yourself. <laughs> that tells me. <laughs> that tells me something. That tells me that. You know, um, that tells me that you're a very layered person, that people see more than what they just saw on TV and you in a game. You know, they they they're attracted to more from you. They want more from you. And the fact that um, Mr. Cosby was doing that, he probably knew that he could keep you on your toes and he probably saw that you could play the game with him as well. You know, when when you're with icons like that and they kind of put you through the paces, I feel like it's it's kind of like a um, it's a badge of honor for you to be to 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 play play with these people you know like a melissa mccarthy or um <clears throat> a kevin bacon or somebody that like you know has had a hundred thousand hours um you know doing their profession and uh and yeah that's really good and and yeah i think <laughs> that you have missed your calling and I think that we need to get you back in the rooms. And I think that we need to get you back acting because you're telling me too too much greatness for, for it not to continue. <laughs> well, thank you, Melissa. And you mentioned Kevin Bacon. So you are in that six degrees of Kevin Bacon because you had a chance to work with him, right? Because also yeah. I, I worked with him in Hollywood. I did Wheel of Fortune. And uh, me and Pat Sajak had an argument on the set. Uh, <laughs> I never watched the show. My mother used to watch it. So we're playing for charities, NBA week. I'm spinning the wheel, and he says, give me a, a vial. I'm saying B, and he's going, that's not a vial. I'm like, oh, goodness. I'm spinning, <laughs> out of, <laughs> I'm spinning out of turn. Um, I'm bankrupting my partner. So we just get into it, and I just go, you know what? You look a lot taller on TV. And he was just like, <laughs> yeah. And then I said to him, I said, you're so short, you supposed for trophies. <laughs> and, <then> we, <laughs> and we just start going at it. So he comes up to me after the show and goes, this was the best show ever. And he goes, oh, my goodness. He says, so I'm on the I'm on the lot. And I go next door because we think I'm thinking we're going to have to do this again. And the producer was like, look, he might not let this air. So just I was gonna say, around, does it make walk the air? around. <laughs> and he says, we might have to shoot this whole thing again. Uh, but Pat Sajak was like, no, this is the best. We're going to do it. I always look for this episode. I can't find it. But I walk next door. And there goes Kevin Bacon. And he snatches me up, brings me on set for this, where well, he's playing the invisible guy, the hollow man. Oh, yeah, yeah, brings, yeah. Yeah. And he brings me on the set. And he's so excited that they created this whole big set for him. And he's like, look what they did for me. And look at this. And, and look at this. And I disappeared here. And I was just like, wow, look at the passion in this guy who's been in so yeah. many sets. Scene. It's like me going to play in the garden or going to play in the forum, you know, playing the Lakers. You know, you get that excitement. And I saw that in Kevin. I was like, wow, this is why everybody works with this guy. He's such an awesome guy. And you got a chance to work with him. Yeah, he's the real deal. Um, you know, he they were shooting here in Atlanta. They shot the pilot that he was working on here. And I was able to play a detective. And, you know, you know who he is. I mean, it's <laughs> Kevin Bacon that's on set, you know. But you, you don't want to be that person that, you know, flips out. And so, um, true story. In case Kevin's watching, so now I'll be outed. But you know, I was, I was talking with somebody, and I was like, okay, well, I'm. I saw him over at the craft service table, which is, you know, for, for those who are watching, it's just a giant table with food all over it. And so I wanted to like get in the kind of in 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 the area where he was going to be. And I was like, okay, well, what am I gonna, what am I gonna take from craft service that would be really cool? So I took a I took a clementine, and I started peeling it. And I was like, all right, well, this will take me some time, and I can kind of be here. And, he was talking with somebody else and I just kind of looked up and he was looking right at me and he was like, hi, Kevin. And on the inside of me, I was like, I know who you are. <laughs> Everyone knows who you are. <laughs> but he was just, uh, you know, just down home, really real, happy to be there, had stories to tell. 
uh, taller in person, speaking of height, yes. um, taller, filled out a suit very nicely. Um, you know, I think that he did some modeling when he was a kid. Uh, great shoulders and just a kind, kind, inclusive person. So, yeah, it's it's again, you never just like just like the game. You never know what's going to take you. Yeah. Well, let 100%. me give you let me give you one more story, Melissa. So we're yeah. in Toronto and we're filming this basketball movie that's back in the 70s. So we got to put on these little short shorts. I had this big beard on. Uh, it was hot as all be damn on this set. Um, and then we're going to have a shot where I'm going to shoot from 94 feet. That's the whole length of a court. And I have to, and these guys are like, have nothing to do with sports. They have no idea. They're Woo! true actors. They don't think, you know, oh, you can make this shot. So I get the ball. I get the rebound. I shoot the first shot from 94 feet, the length of a basketball court. It goes in. Swish. Everybody what? goes crazy. Even myself. So we're jumping around, jumping <laughs> around. And then the producer and the director go, Oh my goodness, they go, all right, no problem. That was rehearsal. Let's do it again. <laughs> Eight hours later, it took me to make that shot again. <laughs> but every time the ball would go in the air, everybody would have to do this, that. And then if it went in and hit the rim, everybody go, ah! <laughs> everybody thought I was such a loser on this set, all the other actors, because they were like, he made the first one. We're getting out of here early today, yeah. you know? Eight hours later, I'm just like, ah! <laughs> Ah, you know, please God, I, mean. just go in. I just remember the van back to the hotel. Everybody just looking out the window, not even looking at me. They were so disappointed in me. I was like, I got to get back Aww. to the basketball court for real. You're like, it's a full court shot. What do you expect? It's a full court <laughs> shot. Right. I mean, that, and, 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 you know, forgive me for not knowing, but that that's like, kind of like a one time only, you know what yes. I mean? If you, <laughs> if you can do that twice on a day, you're lucky. So I think that maybe, maybe their expectations were a little high on that day for you. Yeah. For I, sure. I think, I for think sure. so as well. Melissa, before, before yeah. we let you go, I uh, just want to know uh, any uh, upcoming projects that you want to highlight or, or anything, obviously you mentioned the podcast Bridgewater that has another season coming up, but, but anything you want to let people know about before we, uh, we sign off today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I actually just shot with um, a little known actor by the name of uh, Kevin, Kevin Hart. I believe his name was <laughs> Kevin Hart. Yeah, yes. I, think, I think we've um, heard of heard of him. I think, yeah. I think he's an up and comer. Yeah. I, I think he's going to go. Uh, I think he's going to go wild in this business. I think people are going to really appreciate him. This <laughs> Kevin Hart. Uh, remember that name? Um, no, but he was really great. He he's here in town. He um he he's doing a project called Die Harder. It's a nice. it's a spinoff kind of a the die hard thing um yeah. and i actually play his um his agent in the film and so i got to work with him and uh again another iconic person another very funny person i, I got you know it's, it's just amazing to be around people in between takes to see you know how they are and what they think is funny and their perspective on life and he's a really great guy again very inclusive of his cast and crew and so uh look out for that thanks for asking of course. Awesome. Melissa, thank you so much for, for taking the time to talk with us today. Uh, it's, it's been a pleasure. And yeah, we'll certainly look forward to, to, as Jason said, turn on the TV and find you if we just change the channel anytime. We're, we'll be happy to see you. Uh, thanks so much for joining us here today. Hey, Melissa, you, I'm definitely going to take you up on that, Jesse and I. We're coming to Atlanta yeah. so you can, you know, we're going to be some food junkies. We're going to go around and let you feed us. Yeah. And I'll catch an Atlanta Brave I'll eat Day. Anything, so, yeah, we're ready. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. It's a date. It's a date. Thank, thank you, you, guys. Uh, yeah. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so Melissa. much, family.